Well, hello to all my wonderfully sinister little loves and fans of the macabre. And welcome back to Musies, Modern, Dreadfuls, and Tales of Terror. Today I have a very special treat for you. It is a sinister little tale that I consider to be one of the internet classic horrors. Why they're called sixes. I, um, <sighs> okay. I want to tell you about my life and the strange things I've seen. And before I do, I want you to understand that my actions in the end had reasons. <clears throat> so, um, here it goes. I was born to a single mother. She was only around 15 around the time I was born, and she wasn't exactly ready to be a mother. Apparently, my dad was even less ready because his parents ended up sending him to boarding school so he wouldn't have to be responsible for me and my mother. So we were mostly supported by her parents, but otherwise we were completely alone. I um, started discovering my gift when I was about five years old. My great-grandmother had passed away. I felt really confused when I walked into the viewing room of the funeral parlor and saw my gran sitting in a chair next to her own casket. At that point, I had already grasped that death meant you were gone forever. And yet, there she was. My confusion was overpowered by my relief. Approaching her, she seemed different. There, but not quite the same. Like when you're picturing something in your head. Your eyes are open, and you're clearly seeing what's in the room. But something entirely different at the same time. She whispered in my ear, kissed my forehead, and disappeared. I walked up to my mom and asked her about the roses in Italy, as Gran had instructed. To this day, I still don't know what it meant, but it was something important enough to make my mother fall to her knees. She held me, and it was the only time that I remember feeling like she truly loved me. As I grew, my gift became a little more apparent. I'd see people I wasn't supposed to see in everyday situations. A few would even notice and follow me home. I didn't mind. None of them ever imposed or tried to harm me. They just wanted company until they figured out how to move on or they found someone more interesting to follow around. I'd talk about it as if it were normal. My mother put forth no effort to stop me, but still acted embarrassed when I did it around other people. No one took it seriously, though. Not like Mom did. Honestly, I think she feared me for a while. Then, when I was about eight, things changed, and it was all due to Mom meeting a man named Mike. He was lanky, he smelled bad, and talked too loud. Still, he had a more stable job than mom did, so she fell right into his lap. He wasn't a horrible guy at first, just kind of greedy. My mom told him about my gift, and he came up with a master plan to use me as a pay pig. Post my name up in phone books as the world's youngest psychic. I don't know if he even believed my gift was real at first, but 
He learned otherwise eventually. And that's how I started talking to dead people for a living when I was just beginning to learn multiplication. It was fun at first, when it wasn't the same old tell my mom I love her type of bullshit. Then there was this case when I was 13 where I was seeing a family who believed the spirit of a four-year-old girl was haunting their house. They claimed that they didn't intend to make the girl leave, but rather they just wanted to learn more about her so they could make her more comfortable in their home. When I walked into the house, there was definitely no little girl. There was, however, a gray, non-human entity crouched on their 17-year-old son's back. Its skin looked like paper and its eyes were fully blood red. It came in human-like shape, but it was far from human. These particular non-humans were something I called sixes. Sixes are souls that were never human. They're created out of pure sorrow and hatred. Their negative emotion embodied into an evil, spiritual being. They can project the actions of human spirits to confuse their hosts, make them think they're just victims of a normal haunting. Human souls cannot hurt you unless they're extremely sinister like Bundy Sinister. Sixes, however, can hurt you, along with several other non-human entities. They suck every emotion out of you and radiate so much of their own sorrow and hatred until you either kill yourself or commit a crime so horrible that you'll likely get the death penalty. They usually go after evil, corrupt, or just plain miserable people. They were called sixes because you'd usually only last six months before you lost it. So I think I started resenting my mother when I was 16. I had gotten tired of the job. Everyone in town knew me. All the kids at school called me a freak. By this point, my kids started to drink away all the money that people had paid me to tell them that their grandmother loved them or that their dead child was in a better place. He became violent, angry. He hit my mother and she just took it for a while. Then she started to blame me. If you never would have started talking to fucking Casper, maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. Completely ignoring the fact that he was her boyfriend, not mine. Not long after that, he stopped hitting her and started hitting me. Then she did too. Only months later did I start seeing sixes roaming around whenever my parents were near. I watched this without a word, still allowing them to escort me to jobs. At first the sixes would stay far away. I'd see them out the window, across the street. They creeped closer as time went on. Very slowly, my curiosity heavily outweighed my fear. I had only ever seen them on people's backs. I became a bit more startled when they stood at our windows. They knew I could see them, but they disregarded me. I said nothing to my mother the day I watched one crawl onto her back and latch its gaping teethed mouth onto her shoulder. I wasn't surprised when I saw another on Mike's back later that day. I thought about telling Mike and my mother, 
calling up a specialist to help get rid of the sixes that had only just begun to drain my sad excuse for a family. Then I thought about finally being alone, never having to do jobs that they told me to do, never being subjected to a drunken lecture about my responsibility to support my family, never explaining bruises away to my teachers. So I didn't tell them. I just sat back and enjoyed the show. And that was why they're called sixes. And this story first appeared about five years ago, and um, I think it's been covered several times, but I've always wanted to do it, and I hope you enjoyed it very much. Because this story first appeared on Reddit about, I don't know, five or six years ago, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get in touch with the author for her permission, but luckily I did. So I share this wonderful story with all of you beautiful people. And I will be doing more of her stuff in the future. In the meantime, yippee-ki-yay, musy lovers, I will be back very soon with another story. Stay spooky, friends. Bye now. <laughs>